Hello, welcome to this episode of Emergency Intercom. This morning I woke up and my phone was broken. Not my fault. It's fully your fault. No, it was literally, you know what it was? It was the universe heard me talking about how much I like the camera on your phone Mm. and the universe manifested a new phone for me. So it broke, it broke my phone. See, I was thinking it was the universe telling you to get off your fucking phone because you're on your damn phone all the time. No, I'm not. Um, no, actually, when it happened, I was like, oh, like, this is the universe, like, trying to get Inya to get her burner phone. Like, she's been saying she wants to do I know. I, I was thinking about that. I was like, I literally, I'm not kidding. That's why I was like, I might just transfer, not to say that an iPhone 10 is a fucking burner phone. Like, it's <laughs> literally still an iPhone. But you actually, I'm not kidding. It is, this sounds like so, like, hyper-consumerism, like, brainwash, but it is actually insane how much faster the new phones move, especially with the updates versus this fucking yeah. hinky-dinky-donky-ass phone. Literally, and the cameras on this are, like, absolute garbage. Yeah, no, like, literally, I know y'all can't see this, and I'm literally, we're not going to make the effort to put it in, but, like, look at the fucking camera on this one. It literally looks, I mean, it's kind of... It's kind of a lot. It's kind of cool. It's like blown out. I know. I am going to... I think I'm just going to keep this one until the new fucking iPhone comes out because if I buy your phone, Steve Jobs is about to announce a new I'll one. I'll sell you my phone. Imagine I thought Steve Jobs was still alive and I said that and I meant it. Steve. Um, can you just give me your phone for free? No. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm oh sorry. Oh, my God. It just told your Actually, parent. you know what? I'm feeling good today. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. We can trade. I'll take the iPhone. Tw- no, I'll take the broken one because the cameras on that one are kind of crazy. Yeah, you can take that one. The only th- bad thing about this one is I don't have the wide lens, so now I can't be goofy. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep this one. But basically, I just wanted to let everybody know because um, I'm just different. Like, I'm not like y'all. I'm not like stuck in that capitalistic loop where I feel like this in like insidious need to go buy a new iPhone the second my iPhone breaks. Like, I keep everything not because i'm a hoarder but because one day you'll need it see that's where my poor brain comes into use because people are like oh like just get rid of that phone and i'm like no i need to keep it what if something happens Mm. like i want to keep it it's valuable you're saying this like you didn't just spend like five thousand dollars in the past two days literally elisa sent me a picture that comb released the ballet shoes (laughs) that i just bought from the 2003 collection they re-released a new pair and i literally was like how much and then i was like wait actually literally don't tell me because i actually can't buy them like i should not buy them i literally i have two pairs of comb flats two pairs of ballet-esque comb and they flats. don't fit nope neither, neither of them fit. fit one's too big one's too small yeah i just look didn't you try to get it stretched out yeah and it didn't work because literally like the 2003 ones are made out of fucking wooden leather not <laughs> the even leather, leather turns to dust as he stretches um but basically all that aside we're here to talk about weed. Yep. I mean, we've teased it a bunch before. We're here to talk about our experiences with weed. And I know we've said this probably 36 billion times online, but we don't partake partake in like weed culture as much as you'd assume based off of our characters and how we act um, because we are fucking monsters. Um, no, and we're hella chill. We're chill as fuck. We're chill as fuck. Um, but you know, sometimes we like to like have a weed induced panic attack every once in a while. We want to freak the fuck out. Um, yeah. So fully. We, we, we smoke a little bit or eat a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I guess we, cause we, I can like, can't smoke. Okay. Like, okay. We'll explain our separate situations. Cause we're like the same, but also like not because I can partake if I want, yeah. but it has to be very, very specific. Yeah. Like. I have to have weed that has like an intense amount of CBD in it for me to get high because if it isn't more CBD than THC, I will literally lose my mind and like run away forever. Like <laughs> it's like a paradox for you though cuz like you need uh cbd to like get high but then you smoke cbd and you sleep till 4 p.m the next day yeah and cbd literally sedates me which is uh, one of my theories is that like i think i am you would think i don't know how to explain this because like i in my head i'm like weed is supposed to calm you down but it literally gives me like such an adrenaline adrenaline rush that it like incites a panic attack sativa indica i don't know 
<laughs> I literally don't know. She doesn't know. I, I smoked just sativa once, and I literally, I started shaking, and I almost went to psychosis, <laughs> and I remember I was at O'Ryan's house, and I was like, do you have Please. a CBD joint? Please, it needs CBD now. Yeah, and uh, the CBD fixed me, but it might be placebo. I might just be, like, crazy. Yeah. And I do know, I do... Um, I found out that smoking on an empty stomach is really fucking bad. Like, that's, oh yeah, that's probably why. Like every time I've ever smoked weed or eaten weed, I've had just like the most awful psychedelic, like bad trip experience of my entire life. It's because I probably don't have a full belly. Oh, fully, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious to see if maybe one day, um, if I'm ready enough and all that trauma from those terrible trips is gone if i can just like eat a meal and then smoke and see if it's all good yeah that's actually another thing i always eat before like i'll be with someone who like enjoys smoking weed and they'll be like oh my god i'm gonna smoke and then we should order food and i'm like no i'm getting food in me and then i can like maybe join but maybe i'll have a a midnight snack what is munchies munchies (laughs) If you can't tell, I feel fucking batshit crazy today. I don't feel normal. It's, I mean, it's, I'm not doing a good job at hiding it at this point. I'm, um, not, I'm not good at masking it. I genuinely actually do think it's because you need to eat. Yeah. Because I think I was like, I personally probably... Uh, no. Uh, hmm. It's just... Uh, it's too much. I think for me, at the end of the day, like, as the consumer, I want... The, I feel like people love weed so much because it's easy and like yeah. it feels good every time for them and like the fact that like for you it's a gamble and then for me it's like I literally have to take all these precautionary steps to enjoy it most of the time mm-hmm. it's like that's why I can't be like a full time like consumer connoisseur because I'm like bitch I want to see you at like full blown stoner phase like picking out the nug that has the most crystallization <laughs> at fucking sweet flower or whatever like doing the math on the THC and shit that would be fucking awesome but also I was thinking um, as you were saying that I was like I don't smoke weed I haven't smoked weed since high school so I'm thinking it also could be the fact that I'm just eating edibles because or like taking edible weed because I know it has like it does it, have it's a, a different crazy effect. different effect. So maybe that has something to do with it. But like, oh, no, I've had like fucking freak outs on just smoking weed, too. I don't know. I, I, I just think say, I have I like if... a, a weird brain chemistry. Like, I think it I think it just has something to do with like my anxiety. And then like, like I, weed just makes me like more anxious. I don't know. I go into it anxious every time. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm going to have a bad trip or some shit. Yeah, I guess I used to have that, and then I, like, like was just like, dude, at worst things, worse is I go to sleep. I just go to sleep, because I think, like, the last time I had, like, a really bad, actually, no, the last, my last really bad high was, like, so fucking bad, but I think, her, I'm trying, no, actually, no, the, my last bad high was when you had y- your last good high. <laughs> Was literally because we're always on fucking opposite. Yeah. It's when you, me, and Orion got high together and I got too high. Yep. Which is, again, weird because I had just eaten dinner. Oh, no, I didn't finish dinner because that's why it was a big drama. Yeah. But I went home and I, and I had... There's drama to unpack there. I know. I got high and I, at that point, I can recognize it. When it's, like, yeah. not too bad, like, I've been good at being, like... Oh, fuck. Like, oh, I have to just go put myself to bed and, like, get naked and shake until I fall asleep. <laughs> the absolute worst feeling in the world is, like, a bad high. And, like, you're laying in bed and you're like, I'm just going to go to sleep. I'm going to sleep it off. And then your, like, brain is going a million miles an hour. And yeah. you're, like, literally freaking the fuck out. And I, I always go to this same thought where I'm like, I'm trapped like this forever. Like, I'm stuck <laughs> like this. Like, I'm literally going to be stoned for the rest of my life. Like, I literally hate this feeling. I want it gone. And then I wake up the next morning and I'm like... Huh. That was like, (laughs) that was weird. That was funny. That was goofy. I literally, I don't know what I think. I don't know if I think like I'm going to be stuck here forever, but I think I'm just like embarrassed and Mm. like freaked out. Yeah. And like, because I literally go into shakes. Like I literally like, I like physically start like trembling and like I can't stop myself from trembling, which is also why I think it's like an adrenaline thing because like 
each time it happens the same way. It's like I'm sitting and like I don't know what triggers it. Maybe it's someone mentioning that we're high or like I don't know what it is. <laughs> you're high right now, aren't you? Dude, Christian did that you're to me stoned. once and it also destroyed me. Like, Oh my God, you're so high. Yeah, and it literally... <laughs> <laughs> and I, it, actually, the first time I had a bad high, that's how it happened is I like... Should I just get into that story? Or um, yeah. Um, so my first like really bad high was I, I was ne- again I was never like a stoner because I think like we said this before like just in general I don't like consume a lot, um, but like the first time I had a bad high at this point I was like I was fully chill like smoking eating edibles like it didn't affect me if anything it took a lot for me to get high mm-hmm. so I was taking like anywhere from 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams of an edible and like not thinking twice about it which is which like for the naive is a shit ton like that's that's a lot of weed like yeah that is insane because like now i see literally someone take like a 10 milligram edible and i freak the fuck out i'm like Like, y'all are living life on the edge like you're a dangerous person you scare the fuck out of me actually a, a good fucking comparison is now for me to get high it only takes max like five milligrams yeah. and it has to have a bunch of cbd with that yeah. so i went from like being able to like down 50 milligrams and then on top of that like two hours later smoke because i'm like oh, i'm not as high anymore like i i Dude, could do that literally first coming to la like you were stoned like the entire time like you smoked so much weed <laughs> it was just like it was literally like it was one of those things where I didn't get to do it in high school. I couldn't do it at home. If my dad's hearing this, he's literally gonna kill himself because I <laughs> haven't spoken to him about this. Like literally, it was just like one of those things where I didn't do it at home. I didn't do it in high school, and then once I graduated, I was like, "Damn, I could just buy it here." I'm gonna explore a little bit. Even though I couldn't buy it here, I yeah. But whatever, you get me. It was, it was just like a thing here. But yeah, I was like, oh, I was in my. I maybe I did. I had a little stoner phase, but yeah. it was like only within the week i'd be here and then i would go home and like never do anything yeah um but it was dude this day was a fucking nightmare it was actually what what's that one convention uh vidcon it was it was vidcon i came to vidcon alone i had been up since 6 a.m i was there all day alone i had intense anxiety because like i don't do like well when like people come up to me like in big groups groups. it like actually freaks me the fuck out and i think it's mainly because like in my head i'm like y'all are about to attack me and i'm about to have to fist fight everybody like i don't know you're You're like primal instincts kick in and you're like oh my god there's a lot of people surrounding me i'm gonna have to fight each one of them (laughs) literally so like a bunch of people were coming up to me and like I'm sure on the outside I looked normal, but on the inside I was literally having a fucking panic attack. And then after that long day of just like anxiety and running around alone, I had to get in a two hour Uber back to LA from Anaheim because it was like during peak traffic. My Uber driver was a creep. He asked for my number, was playing like music that he made that it was literally him rapping over goosebump beats. (laughs) Like it was the most insane shit ever. Um, at one point, he, like, pulled off the highway and stopped to get gas and left me in the car alone. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be murdered Dangerous. by him. Like, he's going to murder me. Um, we later on went to, like, troll the fuck out of him, and it was awesome. Yeah. But I got back home. I hadn't eaten yet, which, like, I had done before. I had, like, smoked and, like, had edibles on an empty stomach. But I had anxiety all day. I hadn't eaten. And my friend was like, oh, I have, like, edibles. Do you want some? And I was like, yeah, how much is that? And she was like, 25. And I was like, oh, perfect. So I took it. Didn't think anything of it. Me, my brother, my friend Ashley, and her boyfriend at the time went to McDonald's. I think Ashley's boyfriend was driving or someone had a car. We were going to McDonald's. And as we got to McDonald's, I just, like, this was literally within like less than 30 minutes i went from like being like just exhausted anxiety ridden to like being belligerently high to the point that i like remember i went up to go order and i like i i just like could barely read the menu because my brain was just like being fucking like smushed by the ass of an edible and i was just like sitting there and i was like "Uh, can i and i was like kind of stumbling over my words and my friend ashley from the side just goes you're so high right now and it literally just instantly like i was like 
fuck i am so high right now like yeah. I, I need to go i need to get out of here and i remember i like ordered stuff and i like went and like stood by the water fo- the fountain machine and was like trying to distract myself and get like juice but ashley and her boyfriend were like laughing at me and dante was kind of just watching and being like what what am i witnessing right now like this is weird dante w- was not high dante was yeah. just like sober in there dante's also my brother i don't know if i mentioned that but we get back in the car i'm like in the car and i'm like shoving fries in my mouth because i'm like i think i need food like i'm just like shoving fries in my mouth hella silent we get back to the apartment and the apartment like was in downtown the airbnb i was staying at and it was like the parking garage was like a loop like a spiral parking lot and we couldn't find our fucking floor so then i got the spins because um dante was driving and was just like going in a loop up and down and up and down and everyone kept asking me like what's the parking spot number what's the parking spot number i was like dude i don't i don't know like (laughs) please like stop talking to me right now please like actually i'm freaking the fuck out and then I don't even remember from the car to the apartment, but I got into the apartment. We're all sitting at this, like, island eating. And all of a sudden, like, we're talking. And I don't think I'm talking that much, but the conversation starts, like, slowing down. And I don't know how to explain this, but, like, sentences are still fluid. But the way they're happening is, is, like, if after every word, you picked up the next word. So it was, like... I think I need to drink water. You literally just had a psychedelic trip. Yeah, so it was like it was like I would say I, and then uh, for anybody who's not watching and didn't see my hand movie, it's like I would be like I think I need to drink water, and that's how the conversation was going. We were all sitting in a circle, and it was going like that, and mm-hmm. I just like in that moment I was like this is not normal and i just like put my head down on the counter and i'm not kidding i knocked the fuck out like i literally put my head down and i pass out and dante freaks out and like jerks me awake and i wake up and i see them and i don't know who they are and they scare the fuck out of me (laughs) you're literally the first person to overdose on weed (laughs) you literally like overdosed and died I'm not kidding because I literally did because i they scared the fuck out of me i got up and i start screaming like 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 hysterical like woman in danger screaming oh and i'm like God. in this apartment i'm shrieking i'm like ah, get the fuck away from me and i'm like screaming and running around this like it's not a big apartment it's yeah. like a one bedroom apartment and i'm running in circles like running away from them like screaming and they're obviously chasing me because they're like girl like they're going to grab me and i'm just freaking out and then finally i like i like knock onto the floor i think i like fall onto the floor onto my back and i'm like looking up and dante's over me and is like what's wrong and i'm like who who are you uh, no way um and i like the only way to describe this part is like um this is what my life felt felt like this is like a book and this is what it felt like it felt like like that like, like I think pages I just, flipping rapidly yeah through it, a book. it felt like like speeding up and slowing down yeah like it was like going slow and then going really fast and then going really slow and then she going gave really... you salvia <laughs> she gave you dmt and then i'm like laying on the floor and i like close my eyes and it's just pure white and i like have zero thoughts and and, and like i start genuinely this sounds fucking crazy happening just off of an edible but i literally start thinking about my whole life like everything that's ever happened to me like I'm I've like, had a very similar experience. Yeah, like recounting my life, like trying to like it's like a part of my brain is trying to like feed me the information and be like, this is who you are. And I like to Dante, I was like, my name is Anya Yemez, or like, I, I I'm from Miami. You're my older brother. I, I have like three other siblings, and like I'm like trying to like feed the information that my brain is feeding me to Dante to like verify it to make sure that I'm like a real human. Yeah. Um, and then I like get back up and i'm still in a full panic and i like run to my room and i like in front of everyone i start stripping down my clothes and dante's like hey hey like every, like we're all here and i was like n- n- look away like i i don't know what i said but i like got naked and got under the covers and i started shaking like because my clothes were like like suffocating me so i had to get them off and i got under the covers and i was like shaking and then i started making crazy accusations and like making up theories that i was like I, I was like, I, I know today, like, I was alone with this person and this person, and, and I think I was, like, given something from them, and, like, this, like, dude, it was actually insane. Like, I was convinced all my deepest, darkest fears had happened to me. <laughs> um, 
And yeah, and then I woke up and I was like kind of still convinced about that part. But yeah, and then you had a bad trip like two months later, and, and it re-triggered that it like re brought all that paranoia back, and you like sat in my lap crying about it all, and I was like, I don't know what to do here, but like <laughs> I'm just gonna pet your head and like everything's gonna be okay. I have a very similar like bad weed trip story where, um, so like back in Texas, like well, I have two really bad ones from Texas. Yeah. Um, so the first one like. Um, I was in high school and like weed was still very illegal and like my parents like weren't down for it or whatever and just like all this crazy shit. Um, so me and my friends like bought like a baggie of weed. I don't know how much fucking weed we bought, whatever. Um, and like uh, for some reason like they pinned it on me it was always like I don't want it at my house so you take it at we'll give it to you and you can keep it at your house and then like for some reason it fell back on me and like I had never smoked alone before and I was just like I don't want this in my room but whatever like I'll I'll have it in my room so I had this like baggie of weed and like uh joint uh papers and I was just like alone and bored one night on the weekend and I was like you know what like I'm gonna smoke alone and see what happens. So I like took the weed out of the bag, like crushed it up with my fucking fingers and rolled like, I'm not kidding, the <laughs> worst joint I have ever seen in my entire life. Like it was actually a fucking toothpick. It like has broken bones. No, literally it was like crinkly and like fucking just rancid looking. It was like actually hard to look at. It was so gross. Um, and like I went out to like my balcony um, and I smoked this joint and like, I it like when I tell you like there was no weed inside of it like there was like no weed it was literally like I was just smoking a rolling paper but like for some reason I got like blasted into outer space like literally like zooted beyond belief and I was like oh my fucking god like this is terrible like I hate this I hate the way I feel and then I just like went back to my room and tried to like have fun but I literally like couldn't like I was like just smile like you'll be fine just smile through it like you'll be okay you'll be okay and so I'm just like sitting in my bed like with my eyes closed like rocking back and forth like <laughs> literally like just smiling like and then like I like almost like astral projected or some weird <laughs> shit and I was like looking at myself in the third person and I was like oh my god I'm literally like I've lost my mind like I'm sitting on my bed like smiling rocking back and forth like and then I'm looking at myself it was like this whole weird like cycle of thoughts and then I like snap out of it and I like open my eyes and then I'm like oh my god like I'm freaking the fuck out like I'm trapped like this forever like I triggered like schizophrenia like I'm like literally gonna be like this forever like oh my god oh my god and just like spiral thoughts like they just keep compounding and snowballing and it just becomes like a, like a real thing for you if you're like having a bad trip and so I lay under my covers and I close my eyes and then I start thinking about my parents and I'm like oh my god like my parents like I'm up here like I'm a degenerate I just smoked a joint like my parents if they knew this would like literally Freak like disown out. me like they're so disappointed in me and like that's it like even now like as a 23 year old in a state where it's legal like fully financially like supporting myself when I smoke I still have like intrusive thoughts in the back of my brain where I'm like my parents would be so disappointed in me like literally just like <laughs> the weirdest shit um so I'm laying in bed and then like like the craziest thoughts start coming into my brain like the craziest shit and i just like start i just start repeating the word like blood in my head over and over again like blood 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 and like there's like a second thought in my head where it's like stop saying that stop saying that but i keep saying blood like over and over again and this went on for like 15 minutes and i was like friends gave you math literally that's like i think i was like i don't know what the fuck it was but i'm repeating blood and over and over and over again in my head and i'm like oh my god like did i just like find out that i'm a serial killer like am (laughs) am i did i just like awaken the fact that i'm like an actual serial killer in my brain and like Um, I just want to like kill people now. (laughs) Like, I don't know what was going on. And then I just had this like ridiculous thought. I was like, there's knives downstairs, like get the knife. And like, and then I was like, then I was like, oh my God, like this is real. Like I need to just like figure this out. So I took a bunch of sleeping aid and just knocked myself out. And I woke up the next day and was totally fucking fine. And then probably, like, I should have just known then and there never to fuck with weed again. Because, like, I literally think it's, like, from the devil. Like, literally, it's, <laughs> it's like, devil shit. Like, it, like, opens your fucking third eye and, like, it awakens you from society. Alcohol, alcohol opens you up to demons. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> um, no, it, it, like, 
it's so evil like if it is evil to you um but then i like um like two weeks later i should have known better but i was like whatever like i'm with my homies like it'll probably be different so we're like in this like attic space because again like it's illegal where we live like we have Mm -hmm. to hide when we do it and um it's like furnished though and like this is the first time i've ever used like a bong before and like if you haven't used a bong before like it is so much weed smoke all at once like it's really really gnarly and it hits you way quicker and it's just like this whole fucking thing and also like my friends would be like no like if you cough you get higher like you need to cough more and i was like no like it hurts like (laughs) whatever so i take this like everybody takes a bong rip and then it comes to me and i'm like like i don't want to do this like this this is gonna suck but i like feel peer pressure not from they weren't like you have to do it but i feel like this just like if i don't do it i'll like be a whatever i'll i'm you're gonna be a bitch yeah i'm a bitch like and i don't want to be a bitch so i like take this like massive bong rip and everyone's like no that was too much like that was a big hit like that that's the most smoke i've ever seen come out of this bong like all this crazy you feel shit like proud for like 0. 0.0 seconds no i was petrified i was literally <laughs> like oh my fucking god this is about to be so bad so then i immediately like stumble over to this couch and just like like close my eyes and like go into my head and like it was like i was like experiencing life from like a cell like from the very first (laughs) cell that was formed in my mother's body like it felt like i like was like in that you know that spongebob episode where like the it's the white room and like the The shapes shapes and the words like it felt like i was in that universe but then like um like it was just like the world was exploding around me or whatever and like i like began as a cell and then like i like formed into like a clump of cells and then i was a fetus and then like i was born and i just like experienced my life and and, like then it went on beyond like where i was now and i like experienced like my life up until like death and like it was this crazy fucking experience like it was literally the most hallucinogenic like psychedelic experience i've ever had in my entire life like even have like partaking in like mushrooms and lsd and shit like that so i was just like holy shit like it wasn't necessarily a bad trip but it was like it was just like so anxiety inducing and like it fucked me up for like weeks no like years like i genuinely think it's like that was like the beginning of like my super like existential like thought processes and shit like i really do think it was just like the kickstarter of my depression like i like couldn't look at i couldn't look up at the stars at night because i was just like so scared of like the infinite like universe and like my brain can't process that my god yeah dude it it fucked my shit up but here we are now and you still be trying (laughs) I'm, i'm still fucked up um But yeah, those were like two of the most notable weed trips I've had. And then like I've said it before, but like recently I like had two milligrams of a weed soda and thought people were like trying to break into our house. (laughs) Like, (laughs) hell no. I like, I have like another story, but it's like so fucking gnarly. I like literally don't want to say it. The one where I was like literally like watching myself in like an ad or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like that one was just so insane. And that one's like kind of i feel like it'd be triggering so like i don't want to talk about it but it literally was like so fucking insane like on my last really bad like psychosis ass shit i was literally like out of body watching myself experience the things i was watching and i was being told what not to do in my life to avoid the situation i was already in and it was Ugh. so fucked up and like it was involving someone else and like the other person was like playing a part in the like infomercial i was watching it was insane Mm. um and yeah that also ended with me shaking and going to sleep i i've been pretty lucky like i haven't had like a bad weed experience probably since like 2019 yeah uh, since late 20 which is because you like just figured out what works for you yeah i just like during quarantine specifically like me and orion would like experiment and I found out. Sexually or? Yeah, we would like touch each other's boobs and like get high so that it was like we were like a little more like chill with it. Like Keep going. Oh, huh? Oh, sorry. (laughs) I forgot the mics and camera were here. (laughs) This is weird. Stupid. Um, But 
oh i think that's also another thing is it depends on who you're with because like i would like try to get high with like literally everybody in the world and like in like situations where i didn't know people very well and i like yeah. wasn't super relaxed around them and then i like just like filed it down to only getting high around like you and orion and then like from there i could like venture into like even other people in the friend group but it was literally yeah. just like who are the people that have seen me at like my lowest and like most vulnerable? And I was like, okay, Drew and Orion. Like, yeah. cause if, if y'all see me panic, like I won't feel as much embarrassment and shame. Yeah. So like, that was another thing was like, I hated the feeling of like embarrassment and that would make all of my like bad highs even worse because like on top of just panicking from like being like, fuck, I, I'm like, literally having a psychedelic trip right now like i was like embarrassed by the fact that like something that's seen as simple as weed was doing that to me but i feel like it's common like, yeah it's it's very common i was i was laughing because i was thinking about like next time you have a bad trip around me i'm literally gonna just like make fun of you and like i'm literally just gonna be like nightmare like <laughs> you're gonna have a nightmare you like do that like, drew is fucking evil <laughs> drew, drew will come into a room me and Orion will be like very calmly watching tv and like watching like near death comps like high as shit just on the sofa dude and wait we need to we'll keep going sorry <laughs> when drew will come in and be like nightmare nightmare and be like you, oh my god y'all look so high right now it smells wait. like weed in here did y'all smoke like just saying all this shit and like trying to freak us out and i feel like there was like maybe one time where it like kind of almost got me but then i was like no he's like doing this on purpose like yeah. ignore him I, I i do it to people that like understand that i'm joking but like i don't go into like a group of people who are like stoned out of their mind and i'm like y'all are like gross <laughs> degenerate Do you did, wait heads. no you did it recently like oh, fuck i can't think of it but we were like i think in the car or something and you like it was like me and a few other people and you were like oh my god y'all are like so high right now <laughs> <laughs> like and it's you just always fun. deliver it like that like you deliver it like you're gonna say something important so we all listen <laughs> and then you're like Y'all are so high right now. Are you okay? Like, dude, are you freaking out? It's it's probably the most evil thing I do. It's like <laughs> yeah. try to I try to purposely green people out because I just want them to feel what I feel, you know? Because I forgot about this, but when I was back, my most recent uh, bad weed experience was um, when I was back in Texas. Oh yeah. Um, and I was like laying on the couch watching TV, and I just had the gnarliest thoughts about like. Um, like we were watching Netflix and I was watching these shows on Netflix and I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, this is like garbage TV. Like we're watching garbage TV. And then we watched, I was like, we, I, I was like, we have to turn this off. We have to turn this episode off. Like, or we have to turn the show off because it's literally like it was made by aliens to like keep us like down. Like or some like crazy, like s freaked out, like, um, like thought process so we switched it and we put on this like magic show and it was like <laughs> this dude doing which is like the worst thing to yeah, switch it to but it was like it was so confusing because it was like this dude doing magic but i couldn't tell if it was like a joke <laughs> or if it was real or what and i just kept saying that out loud and i kept like audibly being like no no like no like turn this off and i just kept going into these thoughts about like how like like this is gonna like i literally <laughs> sound psycho but i was like dude like TV is made to like keep the population at bay, like at, like just like the most. That's literally fucking what everybody thought in like the eighties. Yeah, exactly. Like the most smoke <laughs> thoughts you can ever have, and I was like, this is why I don't do. Like this is why I don't smoke or take edibles because I literally like cannot remember like the last good experience I had, and even like like I don't know, I don't know, I don't care. But like, <laughs> literally, I could just go it's on not about like HRH. <laughs> like, I don't know. No, no. Yeah, shut yeah, up. Shut the fuck up. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but I'm like not anti weed because I know it does help a lot of people. But like, for me personally, I'm like it's it was made by the devil, um, like literally, and it's trying to kill me constantly. <laughs> You're like, it's trying to kill me when the only person who could put it in you is you. <laughs> like Exactly. No, the, the weed, it controls people. <laughs> I think, fuck, I was just thinking, oh, that reminded me of um, when I went to Texas for like that fun party we went to. What was that party I went to Texas for? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my brother's funeral. <laughs> that was the event of the year. <laughs> but when I went to Texas for that and I like brought the um my the like chocolate, chocolate edibles <laughs> and i like that one that edible is like five to five five gc five seeds 
PD. And I just remember, I got so... <laughs> I just realized where you're going. I got so high with Drew's family, who I like, this is my first time meeting them. And we like all like got a little, like some of us got a little high and I got high. And you were trying to get us all to play Catan, and I literally, I was like, dude, like, my brain Don't play Catan do with that. me. Do not play You're Catan. You're a fucking cheater. <laughs> I don't cheat. I just play the chaos agent. I like causing people <laughs> pain. I like being the villain. I like being the villain. I can't be the villain in real life, so I'll do it in fucking board game reality. But... <laughs> We was trying to get us all to play Catan, and I was like, dude, I can't. Like, my brain can't do this. And then I got hungry, and I got up. There was, like, leftover, like, tacos that I could make in the kitchen, and I got up to go make tacos, and I'm not going to get the girls in the kitchen. She was in the kitchen for 45 minutes. And, she, okay, she was in the kitchen for 45 minutes, like, making, like, small little sounds. Like, like you'd hear, like, tinfoil crunch, and then you'd hear a drawer, like, open and shut. Then you'd hear, like, a spatula. And she was in there literally, like, forever i was sober so like my like grasp of time was like very accurate and i was like i was like what is she doing in there what is she building in there and like she came back with like the two most bunk like literally two bunk fucking tacos like the most bunk shit i've ever seen it, no it why it made me think i just had a wonderful conversation with a friend like that's what i felt like walking into the kitchen it's like yeah. i was literally just in there like thinking in my brain and the thing is i did get anxiety because i was like i've been in here for so long <laughs> yeah. like, and i think who one of my uh i think your mom pointed yeah, out. my mom was like you were in there forever and then everybody <laughs> just died laughing Dude, and, and i remember you know what made it even longer is because i every now and then i would stop and like look over to see if y'all were looking at me and like <laughs> i would like spend like like three minutes like eyeballing y'all to see if somebody <laughs> looked up to look at me and it made the process slower because i'd like do one thing and then be like dude i've been doing this for so long <laughs> and like look over and see if y'all were looking at me dude but that's one of those times where like i got anxiety but it wasn't like like gonna kill your yeah chip. it wasn't gonna kill me it was yeah. like funny because i was like dude if i'm in here for any longer it's like it's gonna be like too funny like i i like need to get out <laughs> dude i just like i romanticize like sneaking around my like family so much like with weed like I, i'll like think back to like all the times that i like snuck out of my house to like go do like bad shit with my friends and like like coming in and like having to be like quiet like getting past the front door in the moment it's like the scariest fucking thing in the world like one wrong move and like you wake up your house or whatever also my parents like were like heavy fucking sleepers because i would be loud as shit coming into yeah. the house and they would never fucking wake up but i just literally love that um feeling that like feeling or thinking it. back on it like sneaking around i don't i didn't really really have that because again like i just was like too scared to like get in trouble yeah. in my house like my parents were just like so strict that like there wasn't really that but i did i think i smoked in miami maybe like two three times in my life maybe like four random ass times um and i would like try to sneak alcohol from my dad but he like always caught me like he genuinely almost caught, always Dude. caught me so embarrassing i don't know if he told y'all this he, to he told us yeah, yeah literally like awesome like he like made fun of this? you behind your back about it did i know when they went to miami my dad told them this story but my dad would like my uncle used to have a restaurant and my dad would go out to this restaurant like to go hang out with my uncle and like just fucking, I don't know, do what adults do, like, talk shit about their lives, I don't know, like, he would just go, like, every weekend, and it was, like, a Saturday night, he went to leave, and I was, like, party, I was, like, I'm gonna have a drink, and party. I remember, I literally, I'm dumb as shit, I didn't even let him get, like, a block away, like, the second he walked out the door, I got up to go touch the alcohol, Damn. and I literally, like, there was just the table with all the alcohol. I literally, the second he left, the, I don't even think, I don't remember how long he was gone. I'm not kidding. He, he said it he, like he was gone for 30 seconds. Yeah, like he, he literally. told me the story that like you were gone. He was literally like walked to the car. Yeah, and walked to the car and was like, oh, I forgot my wallet. And like turned around to come back in and came back in the second my hand was on the bottle. My dad just stood at the door and was looking at me. He was like, what are you doing? And I was like, nothing and i just like got up and turned and went like went and sat back down and it was, i was so embarrassed was like, <laughs> like you literally like nothing oh cleaning 
I was just checking the levels to see if the seven-year-old siblings... I was just siblings, making sure none of the other siblings were touching it. You're like literal children siblings. Yeah, and um, um, I think the other time was after prom. I like... Me and my friend Annie, who I went to prom with, like, got back to my house and I, like, took alcohol and, like, drank with my friend. Um, oh, my God. And then the next morning, my dad was like, did you touch that alcohol? And I was like, yes. And then he was like, don't do that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, the first time I ever drank. Not, no, this isn't the first time I drank. But, like, dude, I was, like bad i mean there's nothing to fucking do in shit ass nowhere texas so like literally all also, we would like, do it's it is so common for like teenagers to do this shit like i was barely 13 like okay, the, no, no, literally no. i or maybe i was <laughs> barely 14 but like, You're like i was eight <laughs> <laughs> i was eight years old but like i'm it, this is probably the dumbest shit i've ever fucking <laughs> done <laughs> in my entire life so like we start the night at my friend's house, like across the town, and like we're like, we're like angsty, and we're like, ooh, like we should do something like fun tonight. And like, uh, mind you, we're literally 13, 14 years old. Like, none of us know what alcohol is. No one knows what alcohol does to us. We've just seen like adults adults do it, do it. and like, um, just all this like, the, we had just no, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. But like, we went into my friend's fridge grabbed like probably like six beers and like i had pants on and i put them in my pant leg and i called my brother and i was like yo like come pick us up we want to go to my other friend's house and he was like ugh, like whatever sure and like we got into the car and like the the beers in my legs were glass and they were clinking against <laughs> clinking against themselves the entire car ride and like my brother's like 18 at this point or however old he was so he knows what the fuck's going on but he's like really like y'all are like children like what are y'all doing so they're like he like knows what's up he drops us off and we like get to the house and there's enough beer for like one beer each and so we all like have this beer and we fucking chug it and like we're all obviously obliterated off of one beer because we're literally like 30 pounds <laughs> like whatever and like uh, my other friend who's Y'all are hella at, lightweight. Like, one beer? <laughs> no, I swear. Like, it was high alcohol percentage. <laughs> and then, so, my... Um, the friends whose house we went to is like, oh, my mom keeps alcohol in the refrigerator. We should <laughs> drink it. Or in the freezer. So, he, like, pulls out, like the biggest bottle of Grey Goose I have ever seen still to this day. It was one of those, like, giant Yeah, one ones. of the giant ones you see, it like, behind counters at, like, uh, yeah, Olive Garden. Ex exactly. So, we pull it out. It's like three quarters full, um, and we just start chugging it and drinking red Gatorade and chugging and chugging and chugging, like, to the point where, like, between the four of us or five of us, it was four, five of us, we finished this entire giant bottle of Grey Goose. Oh, my God. And, like, which, like, for, like, a person my size to drink that much between five people is a shit ton of alcohol but literally like being that young like i don't know how none of us died like it was gnarly like we were like literally out front like rolling naked in the grass like <laughs> projectile vomiting red all over the place because of the fucking gatorade like crying like literally, like like crying mom like mom like i want my mommy like freaking the fuck out and um my brother like calls me and I don't answer and he's like oh these fuckers are like up to no good so then my brother comes back and like bangs on the door and like makes it he's like police like open up and like we're freaking the fuck out we're like stamming around like we fill the bottle back with water and put it in the freezer like put freezer I mean put water in a bottle and put it in the freezer to try to cover up our tracks like like his mom wasn't gonna notice he was fuck she was fucking drinking water and my brother just like opens the door and comes in and he's like what are y'all doing and we're like, <laughs> like, like, co like my other, my friends like holding back vomit and like, we're like nothing. And he's like, no, I know what y'all are fucking doing. I see the beer bottles everywhere. Like Drew, com you're coming home with me. And so like, I go home, my homies are left at this house and like my mom is just sitting on the couch and like, I like walk in like an actual like TV show drunk, like just like <laughs> obliterated. Like I take my slides off my feet and just like throw them across the room and I like I, my mom's like Drew come here and I'm like okay and like I go and sit on the couch and like I'm like spinning <laughs> literally nodding off yeah I'm like nodding off and spinning and like she's just giving me like the typical mom like 
Yeah. I'm disappointed in you. And that made me feel like fucking shit. She was like, I, I'm, I'm not mad at you. Like, we'll talk about this in the morning, but I'm pissed at you. And I grab a broom and I like throw it at the wall. And like my brother's like laughing his ass off. And my mom is like holding back laughs because like <laughs> she's watching her like she can't be mad because it's yeah. I mean, she can be mad, but she can't be mad because it's literally fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's like comical. Yeah, it's like whatever and so i go into my bed and like i just marinate with that i'm disappointed in you and i'm just like laying there like one leg off the bed just like fucking spinning in outer space because i'm so obliterated and then i wake up the next day and not hung over and me and my mom had a conversation about it and all is well all was well dude just like the putting like water like being oh, that young and not knowing that like alcohol does exactly <laughs> exactly and so i get a call my mom gets a call the next day from this guy's mom yeah and she's like i think our boys were drinking last night and she was like i wasn't gonna she my mom wasn't like a snitch like she was chill or whatever it's like she was like boys do boy shit sometimes and learn their own fucking learn from their own mistakes and she was like because my gray goose bottle was exploded in the freezer <laughs> like it had literally exploded like to <laughs> fucking powder and there was just an ice block in there and she was like like dumbasses and he got reprimanded and yeah just whatever but literally so funny that like that shit like happened like i don't know just like Young and dumb, I guess. I don't know. Uh, young, dumb, and broke. Eh. Young, a- dumb, young, dumb, and broke. Young, <laughs> dumb, young dumb, and broke. What song is that? I think it's Amine. Hmm. I don't know. Or Zeke. Zeke. <laughs> what the fuck is Zeke? <laughs> Wait, what the fuck is his name? Do you know that song? Young, dumb, and broke? Khalid? Yes. Okay. Yes. Zeke. <laughs> Is. We, we won't expose we Zeke. can't talk about zeke but we'll talk but about we zeke him. when we have josh on the podcast I we're gonna zeke press him so for that shit i know literally like why did <laughs> why did he have to die that's all i'll say like why do you have to die <laughs> um fuck i was gonna say i literally i maybe one day we'll get into like press play and what that really was the like, worst time of ever of not the worst time of my life because i did have honestly parts like it was like the my favorite memories as a teenager. Yeah, it like, was it was so awful, much fun. but it was like the best thing ever. Yeah. Like getting taken advantage of by like a scumbag manager, not no, fun. Not good. But press play memories, fucking awesome. Like yeah, like so fun and like oh, oh my god. One day we'll talk about it, but that is where I like I, experimented. Yeah, the most. I was like 16, 17, and that's where I started like dabbling and like oh my god i'm like young and i'm like drinking with my friends and like i know someone who anybody who's like been here but no one's stupid because even the like the fans who would come to press play would like we would see like other 16 year olds yeah. running around belligerently like, drunk we'd be on our floor and we'd go to the lobby and they would all just be fucked up too like <laughs> fucked up in the lobby like yeah. eating papa john's and Domino's. dude literally my first memory with christian um was like my second press play i think and or like my my favorite one of my favorite memories with christian is their second press play i got super drunk because i was like trying to be cool or whatever um and i was like i have texas blood in me i can handle it i got like obliterated and we ordered pizza to the door and i grabbed the pizza and i just (laughs) frisbee it off the balcony and everybody's like dude why did you do that like what is your fucking issue remember um uh nug jenner nug jenner <laughs> dude that was so i haven't seen that much weed in person in, since then yeah since then there was someone we knew who like was a like huge stoner and they left like this is a playlist memory yeah but they left like a big jar of like literally like a fucking cookie jar like those huge cookie yeah. jars full of weed in our room and, and we, we were, put a wig on it <laughs> <laughs> and we called it nug jenner kylie jenner's like sister kylie jenner's like that was actually her firstborn oh. we predicted stormy because we were like this is nug jenner like <laughs> I don't kylie even... jenner gave birth to fucking a jar <laughs> nug, of weed nug jenner so smoked we have pictures of it somewhere yeah. or i know i do on my like old laptop because nug jenner was iconic the yellow <laughs> wig um but yeah, dude. I, I think we should day. talk about 
What were you going to say? Oh, our dream blunt rotations. Yeah, rotation. dream and nightmare blunt rotations. Yeah. Okay, I wrote mine down. I know I cheated and you were like, we can come up with them on the spot. But I'm just not good at that. Yeah. Um, so I wrote mine down. Um, so I'll start with nightmare. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'll start with nightmare blunt Wait, rotation. I'm going to... Like, I'm going to name my... If I have a baby, I'm going to name it Nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) Blood. Um, Nightmare Blood. Oh, my last name being Cheesecake. No one wants to talk about that. Philly (laughs) Cheese. cheese Cheesesteak. All right. So my Nightmare Blunt rotation. James Charles. (laughs) I think that's just very... No, that is a fucking nightmare. I think you can come to your own conclusions on that. Like That would be the worst thing. Okay. It would just... It would be terrible. It would just be awful. Um, okay, then I have the Nelk Boys, like that Instagram, yeah. like Super Chads, whatever, like absolute nightmare. Those like, are the g- guys who, if like you were getting high via bong rips, would like s- make you do a dab against your will. Literally, you would, like, and dab. then they'd start freestyling around. <laughs> <laughs> they'd start like white boy freestyling, like put on a tight beat. I want to rap. Um, I also have white boy who wants to freestyle as a nightmare. Um, I have. <laughs> I have Josiah as Corella. <laughs> so, like, a little backstory. We watched Corella, and Josiah watched the new Corella movie, like, 18,000 times. Like, he's yeah. watched it probably 15 times. I don't know what the fuck his deal with, is with that movie, but he's watched it so many times that it's, like, starting to, like, actually affect his, like, brain chemistry. And every once in a while, he'll just randomly, like, pick up this cane that we have and become Corella for hours. And, like, he, like has, like, dialed in this character, like, so poorly. Like, he has two lines that he just repeats <laughs> over and over again. Like, what are the lines? Like, um... um fuck. Oh, do you remember? It's... Uh, need to know basis. Need to know basis. <laughs> need to know basis. And then there's another one. Um, but literally just, like, nightmare. Dude, it's awful. It, it is so bad. And Josiah is usually good at, like, picking up, like... He had his, um, what's her name? Like Harley Quinn. Oh my fucking he God. He had his Harley Quinn moment after, <laughs> <laughs> after Bird Cage. <laughs> Dude, Josiah Harley Quinn and Josiah Corella. <laughs> Josiah DeVille. Like, I literally, like, if I could, like, turn Josiah's, like, if I could go in and lobotomize that part of Josiah's brain where he becomes <laughs> these characters, like, I would. Like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Putting him under the knife and like killing Harley Quinn and Cruella <laughs> out of his brain. Um, but Harley Quinn wasn't as bad. Cruella's really bad. It's just so. It just like literally. It. No. It, it's it, annoying. It, 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 it like it sets off like a rage I haven't had since I was like fifteen, angry at my siblings. Yeah. Like I literally, he does it, and like I become like infrared, like angry, and I want to like beat the shit and this motherfucker knows it makes us angry and he feeds off of that energy like he feeds off of like so like literally i don't like when he's corella like i don't look him in the eyes like i give him nothing i don't respond to him i give him absolutely nothing because he will keep fucking going yeah i started doing that too i just like literally will walk away yeah leave him in the room doing it alone and he'll keep doing it in the room alone for like five minutes hoping someone will come back and we just don't it's just so gnarly and then my final nightmare blunt rotation is any bird just in you general so i hate fucking <laughs> birds you hide a room with james charles milk voice josiah in a full corella de Mille <laughs> costume and a bird like trying to get out and hit it the window sounds like a fucking nightmare for yeah, a that reason does sound like because nightmare. birds are evil like literally like i'm not into the birds aren't real shit they're real but they know what they're fucking doing they're so erratic they like <laughs> will so come weird. after you and like shit on you i have no reason to hate birds as much as i do but because i've never been shit on i've never been attacked but like walking through a flock of pigeons is the scariest thing in the world like they are they'll just come after you they just come after you i've never been like no bird has ever come after me and then guess what i i found out (laughs) i'm literally just like and then then i found out there's this species of bird or hawk or falcon in Australia that when there's bushfires they fly down and grab sticks that are on fire and fly like 15 miles away and drop them in dry brush to fucking hunt if that's not the most evil shit you've ever seen they'll start wildfires they're literally serial arsonists like birds are fucking dark this is their planet but they're evil (laughs) 
<laughs> like they're evil. We're literally, we are the invasive species to animals. Mm. And that's why I'm not somebody who gets too mad at animals other than fleas. Because I'm like, okay, fuck all that like biology shit where every animal is important. Get rid of that motherfucker. Yeah, like, get, rid don't fleas. Need fleas. Get, get rid of fleas. Get rid of fleas, period. But, I'm not. I'm not saying eradicate the bird population. <laughs> I, we need wait, them. Wasn't, uh, I think uh, Lucas was saying that he was like mm. um, he would put a dome. He would get all the birds onto one island, put a dome there, set off a nuke in the dome, and yeah, kill, kill every, every bird. bird. No, I don't think every bird deserves to die because we do actually need them. But I'm just saying every bird should stay away from me because I will start throwing punches now. Like, I will start beating fucking birds' asses. Like, I don't care. I literally don't care. I literally hate birds, like, yeah, so do. fucking you much. Yeah, you like, genuinely have a fear of them. Yeah, like, anytime they fly, whatever. I could go on for hours and hours about my hatred for fucking birds, but should we do your nightmare now or my dream? The thing is, I, I, I like, was really trying to think of a nightmare of mine. Oh, my God. Actually, I'll start with an influencer, Tana Mojo. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll be my nightmare is in a room with... Tana Mojo. I can't really, like, think of anyone else. I would fuck with uh, Tana Mojo. Like, I would like to smoke with her. I feel like she has a lot going on up there. No, I would feel like she would need, like, to smoke so much to get high. I don't... She doesn't get high anymore. Yeah, she, no, there's no way she's she getting high. She gets sober, and that's her being high. <laughs> she's, high she's high all the time. I don't... think. Like, Actually, maybe that would even be a nightmare. I think, like, between Tana Mojo and, like, James Charles, James Charles is more of a nightmare yeah. to get high with. Like, that would literally be, like... That sounds like being in a room with like the it clown high. <laughs> like that's like that's what it feels like in my head. Um, Stop. Um, I'll start with my dream blunt rotation instead okay. of nightmare because I like can't think. I was in the bed and I was like, who would be a nightmare to be any man I don't know? Like yeah. that immediately is a nightmare. But like especially any man I, I don't know. I think all of mine were men. Yeah. Yeah. All of yours. That, were men. There's a reason for that. I did have Ellen um, as a nightmare because <laughs> I literally think she's evil, but. <laughs> Like, I think she's actually evil. Like, not like, oh, look, she doesn't pay her workers. No, I think she's an actually, like, evil energy. She's a demon. Yeah, she's an actual demon, like, reincarnated. But, um, sorry. But, okay, my dream blunt rotation is Florence Pugh, Elisa, mm -hmm. and Orion. They have to be there because, yeah. like, those are people who, like, every time I'm high with them, it's, like, always a funny, <laughs> like, kiki. Florence Pugh because I'm, like, in love with her. I was going to say Rihanna, but she, like, would make me so horny <laughs> that I would, like, be high as fucking extra charged and horny. And I'd be like, come on, let me fuck. Like, let, me, let me have sex with you. Or it would, like, cause me anxiety. So, actually, maybe Rihanna is, like, in my nightmare rotation only because she would, like, I would be horny around her and it would make me really insecure. And, like, I would have intrusive thoughts about, like, how weird it is that I'm attracted to her. And I feel like she could handle her weed better yeah. than I can. So she would be like high and super chill, and that would give me anxiety. And you're in the corner, like fucking shaking and sweating, like. I yeah, have this is literally the second episode I've mentioned Rihanna, and like <laughs> I need to get a life. Um, we need to save Rihanna once the wealth war happens, because like she's a billionaire now, and like. No, yeah, I'll, Rihanna's I'll, good. I'll, I'll I'll let her take refuge in my house on one condition that she makes me an album a year. An album a year. Yeah. No, do do like three years because I I do think you need like time between albums. To yeah, like to really just let it resonate. Yeah, but like we were talking about this the other day, cool fucking conversation. Like, can we stay on topic? But we were talking about this the other day, and like, anti being her last album, if mm -hmm. that is her last album, is a serve. It's the serve of the century. It's like really like truly like artist mastery. Like, you don't let yourself fall down. You don't let yourself become an Eminem. Exactly. You stop. <laughs> You stop it before it's you too stop late. it before it's too late. <laughs> but I feel like we're gonna get one more Rihanna album, maybe a Beyonce I album. Don't I don't think we're I gonna think get another done. Beyonce album, which is like an actual war crime. It's heartbreaking. But what was the last one? Lemonade. I think the Carters maybe. But that doesn't count because that's a yeah. joint album. We'll probably get another Carters album. I'd um, be down for a Carters album. And I, I know Nicki Minaj has one more album contractually obligated so where i think we're gonna get one more nikki album as well which is like like that's the harsh reality of growing <laughs> older getting older that's the harsh reality of growing up is that beyonce's not making another album exactly i'm gonna like actually piss myself like <laughs> okay uh, should i try and uh, come up with my nightmare okay yeah. i'm stealing from you it's gonna be james charles okay any straight man that i don't know mm -hmm. honestly 
like randomly enough, I was thinking Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I know I like said I want to have sex with him and I and I will be having sex with Drake soon. That like big things are coming. Like I will like be having sex back with him. Soon. To back to <laughs> back. I'm literally You never and Drake having... back to back just slamming asses. <laughs> BBL Drake. We're literally never gonna have sex. It's just like fun to talk about. Um, so Drake, James Charles, any like random man I don't know. Like in my head, like I'm like standing outside of like the nice guy, and James Charles walks out, and I'm like smoking alone, and James Charles walks out. Hi, like, sisters. <laughs> and he's like, "Can I get a hit?" And I'm like, because I'm high and like scared that he like exists, I like give it to him, and then Drake comes out, and he's like also smoking and he just stands next to us and i start freaking out and then a random man sees drake and he's like oh yo i love your music so much can i get a hit of that and he starts smoking with all of us and that's my nightmare rotation oh and my God. i have an uber that's coming but because of like the high surge and everybody trying to leave at once it's like 30 minutes away. oh hell no that that's is my nightmare. a nightmare situation <laughs> oh my god wait I, j- I know I'm, i keep getting off topics but one day we have to tell our james Char- charles stories like literally one day we have to get into that um but okay my dream blunt rotation azalea banks i (laughs) I feel like that bitch has a lot to say i feel like she'd be so fun yeah it would just be like she just would open my mind like she would just because everything she's ever said i agree with (laughs) not actually yeah i was not actually um okay Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning. morning. Oh, Just, yeah. like, really wholesome energy. Evan and Caitlin. That's, yes. I'm adding that to my dream blog. Yes. Okay, keep going. Um, the guy who zapped that girl into a different dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I, what I'm talking about? Yeah. Wait, well, let's, let's act it out. Um, we're all energetically connected. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as coincidence. Um, that fool... That, literally, he knows what he's saying. Like, he knows what he's fucking saying. No, bitch, he would make you existential because he'd be high as shit and he'd be like... But he'd be comforting while he did it. Okay. Um, I'd, where the fuck is he getting those children? <laughs> he has, like, 18 babies now. Um, and then I have Caesar from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> that motherfucker... Wait. Saul Goodman, but Mm. it's Bob Odenkirk in character. Okay, okay. I'm high with him. Okay, but yeah, Caesar from Planet of the Apes, because, I mean, that's like a no-brainer. Like, that motherfucker knows things. He is scary. No, he's not. He's like... Is it? Oh, I... He's like torn. I... He's like, I don't... Like, I want to, like, rise because we were tortured our whole life, but, like, I'm thinking the of same... the other monkey in Planet of the Apes who's, like, really scary and, yeah. like, doesn't fuck with Caesar and, like, throws him around in that one yeah. scene. Like, Caesar... I mean, Caesar's kind of a bitch because he plays both sides, but whatever. And then I have <laughs> HRH Collection. <gasps> oh, my God! Because imagine, imagine HRH Collection and Azalea Banks, like, just communicating. I, fuck, your dream butt rotation was so good. Thank Can you. we just, like, amalgamate ours? Like, imagine that room. That would be too many people, and I would have anxiety. We no, would have actually, to, like, so put weed in a... Uh, uh, An air diffuser. Yeah, and just, like, <laughs> gas it into the oh, air. Oh, if I was crossfaded, though, it would be, like, literally the time It would be magical. Life. If I was crossfaded, my nightmare blunt rotation would turn into my dream blunt rotation. Does that make sense? <laughs> it would become good. See, that's that was my problem with my nightmare rotation as I was writing it out. I was like, like, I'm so... <laughs> Like, like dark like dark and evil like there's like a part of me that like wants to like <laughs> see that happen and be like in that really city situation and just i just want to see james charles high like i just want to see that full high and freak the fuck out because whatever um oh my god i'm gonna piss my pants okay yeah that's the end of this episode media of the week is i don't have my phone so i have to go off the top of my head um reminiscing by i don't know the band so because i don't have i think the river band i don't know um on my mind and mine by everything but the girl oh and wichita lineman Mm -hmm. by uh, glenn campbell i just made what's so annoying about my phone dying and like breaking is i just made one of my favorite playlists i've ever made for my ride back from joshua tree yeah and like everything on that but i wouldn't give you all everything because then like what would you come back for (laughs) (laughs) um okay so my media uh i like yellow by coldplay right now i'll admit it whatever i'll let it go um i like noah's ark by coco rosie that's a really fucking solid song 
Um, and uh, like, this is embarrassing for me to say. Um, oh my God, I know what you're going to say. I think we're coming to an end on the Imagine Dragon slander. I think I think we're almost there. I can't listen to a song fully and enjoy it, but it like I listened to like a few of their songs with an open heart and an open mind recently and it wasn't the worst thing in the world. And they have to be so they have to be doing something fucking right to have 80 billion streams. Okay, then say that about Ed Sheeran. No. Exactly. Ed She Banshee, literally a witch. Um and then Everything He Needs by Carly Rae Jepsen. Uh, he needs me. He needs me. Uh, he so needs good. me. Oh, he needs me. Hearing. He needs me. He needs me. All right, that's the end of the episode. Me. My SIM card, I think, is wet, and then my phone, my backup phone, isn't working anymore. So Ooh, my life is a nightmare. Go watch Old Boy too. Just that. Oh, you know what you should watch? Your fucking mouth, bitch. <gasps> Whatever. Bye. I'm also I'm about quitting. to shit myself. I'm quitting. Go ahead, bitch. Bye, bye. Why the fuck are you still here? Bye, 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 bye. Ow.